Ever wonder what happens to your body if you donate it to science? Well, wonder no more. Among the first things done to donated bodies, beyond refrigerating them to slow decomposition, is to test them for any infectious diseases. After this, the body will typically be embalmed, though there are exceptions to this, such as if it's being used for study on how the body decomposes naturally over time, in certain scenarios, as is sometimes done with CSI training or investigation. Also of note, if your body is accepted once they're done with it, the authority studying it will often, depending on the wishes of you or your family, cremate the remains free of charge, or otherwise return them to your family for a private service at your own expense. It should be noted, though, that most medical institutions in the United States place a height and weight limit on the cadavers they'll accept, usually limited to 6 feet, 1.83 meters, and a max of between 180 to 200 pounds, which is 82 to 91 kilograms, depending on the medical institution. The main reasons for these restrictions are practical in nature, from transporting more girthy bodies being more difficult, and also that dissecting obese bodies is a lot more troublesome owing to slicing through a lot of fat just to get to what's being studied. A Louisiana State University professor Stephen Himesfield very frankly states, When you're doing medical dissection and you're up to your elbows in fats, it's greasy and unpleasant. Thanks to competition for bodies being stiff, in the land of descendants of the traitors of the British crown, American citizens who are somewhat petite have a great deal of career choice when it comes to what their bodies will get up to after dying. As for these options, doctors may use your body to train in some new and innovative surgical method or with some new piece of equipment. A somewhat more exciting cadaver career path can be found at the University of Tennessee's Forensic Anthropology Center, where they have been watching bodies decompose in various ways for about three decades now. One of the many ways in which they might use your body is to mimic various ways in which people are murdered and then just observe the effects on your body, possibly even over spans of many years. They also might use a living picture of you to observe the change in your visage to help them figure out how a given corpse probably looked in life. This and many other such experiments provide incredibly valuable data to a variety of fields, most notably in the case of crime scene investigation. If being murdered after you die and then observed as you decompose isn't your thing, when you donate your body, some institutions allow for selecting to donate for safety testing. If you check that box, your body then may be used as a crash test dummy. You see, it turns out the use of dead bodies in car safety testing is something every car manufacturer benefits from when testing some new safety device or car design. Although when asked, most seem prone to outright deny they test in this way. For some, it's technically true that they don't and that they may simply donate funds to various medical institutions that in turn, at the behest of the company and the National Highway Traffic Administration, use bodies to test various cars and car safety equipment. So it's not technically the car company doing it, they're just kind of paying for it. Beyond crash tests, there are countless other ways in which your body might be used if you opt for safety testing, including in testing various helmet types. In fact, some dead people's heads are presently being used to design better helmets for those who participate in American football. As you can imagine, the NFL is particularly interested in this line of research, but it's also potentially massively beneficial for the many thousands of teams who play the sport. If this doesn't sound fun enough for you, you may also be able to opt into use by the military. If accepted, your body will likely be loaded with state-of-the-art sensors and then used to test new weapons and armor, or just use in things like testing a given explosion's effect on the human body. Yes, if you'd like to help protect the troops or to help in the design of weapons for making more bodies out of other countries' humans, you too can potentially have your corpse blown up for military science. Or if you're more of a pacifist, you may have the option to spend the afterlife as a skeleton. But not like other skeletons, a skeleton examined by countless researchers. Yes, there are numerous anthropology departments across America who can take your body and strip it down to such for study and research. In these cases, of course, your skeleton will likely not be cremated or otherwise returned to your loved ones. On this note, the University of Tennessee currently boasts an impressive collection of over 1,000 full human skeletons. And for the extreme exhibitionists among you, it's even possible to donate your body, or at least part of it, to be put on public display. Besides the famed Body Worlds exhibition, the Mutter Museum in Philadelphia is one such option for such. So to sum up, there are countless things your body can be useful for, from helping to train the newest generation of surgeons to getting blown up by the military to help improve our ways of making more dead bodies. To join in this train, you simply need to first contact a relevant authority or institution. Usually your local medical school is your best bet. Though if you just want the free body disposal and don't care what's done with your corpse, a body broker isn't necessarily a bad option. 
Either way, you'll then only need to fill out a few quick forms to signal your consent to make it happen. From there, buckle up, Buttercup, possibly literally if you're going to be used as a crash test dummy, because your body might just be in for some shenanigans now that you're done using it. Speaking of dying, a lot of people say lobsters are biologically immortal, but are they really? Check out our video on the subject here to find out now.